Hello. So for unit 6, we will be discussing the equation of a line more broadly. So the equation of a line can be written in slope and y-intercept form, where the slope is m and b is the y-intercept, giving us an equation of y equals mx plus b. We've seen this before, but we're just going to review this again. So we want to identify the slope and the y-intercept of each linear relation. We want to use these values to write the equation of the line. So we're going to find our slope by taking any two points on the line and finding the rise and run between these two points. So we're going to pick these two points, which is the point 0 and negative 5 and 3 and negative 3. So it's increasing. And we can see that the rise over run, or the rise is 2 units and the run is 3 units. So we can find the slope by either doing our delta y over delta x equation, which is um, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But we can also use the rise over run equation, which is in either case going to give us two thirds. Now we want to find the y intercept, which is our b. So we find our b by just looking at the graph. And as you can tell, our y-intercept is at the point 0, negative 5. So our b is negative 5. Now we want to create this equation in y equals mx plus b form. So we saw that our m was 2 thirds and our b was negative 5. Now substituting these values uh, which we found beforehand, we can find our equation of the line. So we have y, we have y equals 2 thirds x plus negative 5, because that's negative 5 was our y-intercept, which gives us a y equals 2 thirds x minus 5. Now, for this question, pause if you can and try to figure out the slope of the line by yourself. So in order to find the slope, we have that we want to pick two points on the line. So the points that I'm going to pick are up here and up here. We could have picked any other points on the line because the thing about lines is that no matter where you are, the rise over run, the ratio of rise over run is always going to be the same. So whether I take this point and this point or this point and this point, it does not matter. So in this case, I know that the rise over run is negative two because we start at three and then we end up at one and we only moved by one unit to the right, so we're going to have negative 2. However, we could also see this down here. It's still rise over run of negative 2 over 1. Now, keep in mind that I say rise over run over here because in reality, it's not really rising when it's going down, is it? It's falling. So, when it's descending, you can think of it as a falling over run. But nevertheless, you wanna, you're going to want the negative to be in the numerator so that it could indicate that it's falling. Now we want to find the y-intercept, which is right up here, which is the point 0 and 3. So we have a b value of 3. Now we want to create an equation for this in the form of y equals mx plus b. Using what we've found, m equals negative 2 and b equals 3, then y equals negative 2x plus 3. Now, a horizontal line, we saw this briefly in the last unit, but this is where a line has no slope, a slope of zero, I mean. It has a slope, but the slope is zero. So, we write this in the form of y equals b, not y equals mx plus b, because m, in this case, is zero. So, it just disappears. This term just disappears. So, we just identify this line by its y-intercept. So here's an example. We would call this line y equals 4 because it passes through the point of y equals 4. So at every point x, the equation remains constant at y equals 4. Once we try mapping our point onto the x-axis, it'll always end up just being the same thing. It could be any x value, but it'll always be y equals 4. So it's a constant line of y equals 4. So 
All that to say that if we have a horizontal line, so a line with no slope, then we just need to define it by its y value, since it's constant for all values of x. y does not change. For vertical lines, however, this is a bit different. This is where the slope is undefined. So this does not, I, this will not intersect with the y-axis uniquely. And I say uniquely because lines and functions in general, they need to intersect the y-axis, or if they're going to intersect the y-axis, they're going to intersect it once. So you can't have an x value that maps to two points. But all that to say that since there is no y-intercept, then there's no b value. So the only valuable information then is the x-intercept, which we will define as a. So since we're only looking at the x-intercept, we need to know the vertical line's equation is of the form x equals a. So pause and tell me what do you think this would be. So we would call this line x equals 2. And at every point y, the equation remains constant. It remains x equals 2, no matter what. So we want to identify the slope and the y-intercept of each equation of, the line, of a line. So we have our slope of 3 and our y-intercept of 4. Over here. Over here we have a slope of negative 1 because it's the negative sign in front of the x and a y-intercept of negative 2. Over here, we don't have a, we have a y-intercept of 0. We know this because this is a direct variation. It passes through the origin. So, this is the point, uh, a slope of 14, and a y-intercept of 0. Over here, we have a straight line, so it's a slope of 0, and, and a y-intercept of 6, which is what we have. Over here we have y equals x plus 3, so we have a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 3. So we can just define it like this. Now this one we saw there is no y-intercept, so we're defining this by its x-intercept. So in this case, um, so in this case, we say that the slope is undefined, the, the y-intercept does not exist, is not available. And so we define it by the x-intercept, which is a equals negative 2. Um, now we want to graph a line given our m and b value. So we see that the m here is 3 quarters, or 3 over 4. So it's going to rise by 3 units and run by 4 units. Okay, And it's going to have a y-intercept of negative 2. So, in each case, we want to write the equation of this line. So, when starting, when graphing, to, when graphing this, we want to plot B, and then we want to find all the other points on the line using a slope. So, we start at B, and we count rise over run to find the next point. Since the relation is a straight line, rise and run counting can be used to find all the other points on the line. So, take some time and fill that out on your graph if you can. Now, here's the graph. And as you can tell, we start at the y-intercept of negative 2. And then we rise by 3 units. 1, 2, 3. And we run by 4 units. And we should end up on the line. 1, 2, 3, 4. Right here, we land on the line. So if we were to connect a line from here to here, we can connect it all the way through, and then we would find all the points in between. So the equation is y equals 3 quarters x minus 2. Over here now, we don't have a y-intercept of... We don't have... Sorry, we have a y-intercept, but it goes through the origin. And we know this because b equals 0. So, this is direct variation. And we have a slope of negative 3. And when it's negative, we know it's decreasing. So, negative 3 means that for every unit run, 
it's going to fall by 3 units. How can we see that? Right here, we start at 0, or you can start even earlier than that, it makes no difference. But if you start at 0, you'll see that you're going to fall 3 units for every unit that you run. Now when we write the equation we do not include b, we don't say y equals negative 3x plus 0 because if you write plus 0 you, you can just ignore it because it's not going to add anything. So you just write y equals negative 3x. m equals negative 1 half and b equals 5. So in this case we have a negative fraction, I don't know if we've seen a lot of these. But in a negative fraction, you want to now assume that it's falling by negative 1 and running by 2 units. So it's going to be a relatively flat equation. So, like you can see over here, it falls by 1 unit and runs by 2 units, not 1 unit. So our equation is y equals negative half x plus 5. Now we want to identify this slope and vertical intercept of the following linear relation and explain what the relationship means. We'll write an equation to describe the relationship. So keep in mind over here that Tracy's walk is a, distance, is a function of, different, of distance and time. So we need to find our slope and the y-intercept. So we start. We start by identifying any two points on the graph points that I chose were 0 and 5 and 2 and 4. So when we find our slope, it will give us 4 minus 5 and 2 minus 0. So negative 1 over 2, that's negative half. And as you can tell, a negative half is a bit flatter than a slope of 0. It's decreasing but it's it's not as flat as a as a slope of zero, but it's not as steep as a steep as a slope of one. So it's right in the middle. It's relatively flat. So now we find the y-intercept, which is y equals uh, zero. It is y equals five, right? And our slope is telling us that Tracy walks one meter in two seconds. Now, if we wanted to explain what this relationship meant. Her distance is decreasing over time. So, you know, this could be that she is 5 meters away from somewhere. And as she walks, she gets closer to it. So her distance to it decreases. So, let, B, let D be her distance from somewhere. And let T be her time walking. So our D equals negative half T plus 5. Now, we want to look at the equation of a line in standard form. And this is when the equation of the line starts getting a bit more abstract. So, um, the equation of the line can be expressed in, in different ways. y equals mx plus b, which we've seen before. This is the slope and intercept form. Or we have the standard form, ax plus by plus c equals zero and this equals zero is very important now both equations represent a linear equation but it's just written in different ways now this standard form you're going to see this a bit more in grade 12 calculus if you choose to if you choose to go that far in math in first year calculus and in, in university and college in vector calculus to put a fine note on it you're going to be looking at this form a lot more. Um, and the standard form is where a, b, and c are integers. Okay? a and b are not zero. And a is always positive. So in order to graph an equation in standard form, the equation first must be converted to y, uh, to slope and intercept form first. And then from there, we find the slope and y-intercept. And then we can convert the equation of a line from standard form to slope and y-intercept uh, and to 
slope and intercept form by rearranging the equation to uh, isolate for y. We're going to go into examples on how to do this. So first we want to rearrange the equation to isolate for y on one side of the equation. So we start with x plus y minus 3 equals 0. This is our standard form. We want to express this in slope and y-intercept form. So we rearrange it by bringing everything that's not y to the other side of the equation, like this. So this x and minus 3 is going to go on the other side. So we end up with negative x plus 3. So y equals negative x plus 3, which gives us a slope of negative 1 and a y-intercept of 3. Now we want to change all of these again into slope and intercept form. Um, now this one's a bit difficult because if you remember our, our equation, we never had any, anything on the y. We never did. We always had y by itself. So in this case, we're going to have to do some division to isolate y. So we start with this one. As you can tell, we brought x and negative 4 to the other side, and then we divided everything by, by 2. We divided everything by 2 because there was a 2y here, and we wanted just y. In order to get from 2y to y, we have to divide by 2, which is what we did over here. Now, over here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to bring everything to the right side except the negative 3y. And from there, we're going to have to divide by negative 3. So for us, this means that we're going to divide everything by negative 3, and we're, end on, we're going to end up with this. And so for our first equation, as you can tell, we have negative x over 2. That gives us a slope of negative 1 half and a y-intercept of 2. And over here on the equation on the right, we have a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of negative 5. Now, we can convert the equation of a line from slope to standard form by rearranging the equation to have 0 on one side and by manipulating, that is, to, to use the equations and to shift the variables around, uh, we can manipulate this equation to obey the three rules of standard form. And keep in mind that the three rules are that a, b, and c are all integers, so there's no fractions. a and b are both not zero, and a is always positive. So whatever's on the x has to be a positive integer. So we have this equation. Okay, this is an example. We have this equation of y equals negative 3x plus 8. So we want to bring everything to the right side. And we do that by bringing the y to the other side. We could have brought everything else to the left side, but that would have just been extra work for no reason. So we're going to bring y to the other side by subtracting both sides by negative y. And then we have this. Now we want it in the form of the x term, y term, and then the constant. So we order it first. So we have negative 3x minus y plus 8. Now a, which is what we have in front of our x variable, it cannot be negative. So we're going to multiply everything by negative 1. And we do that by, by uh, sorry, we do that by changing the signs on every other term next to it. So we end up with 3x plus y minus 8. And since there are no fractions or decimals, we can conclude that, that this is our standard form. Now we want to do the same for these equations. Now remember, standard form should not have fractions. And over here, everything that we're looking at has fractions in it. So we have to clear the fraction by multiplying all terms by 2. So going to do this. We have two, we have y, we're going to multiply y by 2, we're going to multiply half x by 2, and we're going to multiply this negative 4 by 2. So this gives us 2y equals negative x minus 8, and this is x plus 2y plus 8 after we bring everything to the other side. Now over here we can't just multiply by 4, because then you're going to have over here 8 over 3, and you're still going to have a fraction. 
So how can we get rid of a fraction when when there is two two fractions with different uh, denominators? Well, we have to use the lowest common denominator or the lowest common multiple. In this case, the lowest common multiple is 12 because the denominators is 4 and 3. So the lowest common denominator would be 12. So we multiply everything by 12. We have 12y equals 12 times 5 over 4 and then minus 12 times 2 over 3. And then when we do this, 12 and 4 cancel out because you, 4 fits into 12 3 times. And 12 and 3 cancel out because 3 enters 12 4 times. So we have 12y equals 3 times 5x minus 4 times 2. So this gives us 12y equals 15x minus 8. And we rearrange it to get our x term in the front, our y term on the second, and then our constant term last. And since a in this case is positive, we don't have to worry. This is our standard form.